So let's talk about the magnetic fields created by currents. So a magnetic field is created by a current, and we can use a second formulation of the right-hand rule to find the direction of this magnetic field. So let's say we have a wire, there's a current running through it, and for this second right-hand rule, we take our thumb of our right hand and put it in the direction of the current. And then our fingers curl around that uh, wire in the direction of the magnetic field. So for this particular wire here, my current is running up, my thumb is pointing upward, and so my fingers on this side of the wire are pointing into the ground, okay? And so pointing in, we represent that as an X there pointing into the ground. And so then my fingers keep on curling around and on the other side of the wire, my fingers are gonna pop up, pointing up toward me out of the page, out of the board, out of the concrete. And we represent that as a dot right here. So on this side, the magnetic field is into the board and on this side, the magnetic field is coming out of the board. So it makes a circle in this direction. That's the direction of the magnetic field around this wire. Now we could take a compass and use it to align it along the direction of that magnetic field and we'd see the direction of the compass needle change as we move it around this wire to indicate the direction of the magnetic field around this, this wire here. We have a special law called Ampere's Law which helps us figure out the magnetic field strength at some distance away from our current carrying wire. So let's imagine I've drawn kind of a circle around my wire here. And we can define little length segments along this circle. And each little tiny segment along that circle that I've drawn around this wire here, we can represent that as delta L. And so Ampere's law tells us that the sum of all of the magnetic field that is parallel to this uh, length segment that I could draw around some closed path has to equal a quantity that we call mu sub zero, which is the constant permeability of free space and times the current running through our wire. Okay, so Ampere's law says that the sum of this magnetic field parallel to this increment delta L that I could draw around some path around that wire has to equal uh, the uh, permeability of free space times the current through our wire. Okay. Now let's assume that this magnetic field here is going to be constant so we can move it out of the summation. And so then we've got the parallel component of the magnetic field around this um, path I can draw around the wire has to equal the sum of all those little segments. And then uh, the sum of all of those little segments then would be just the circumference of the circle that I drew here, which would be two pi r. So then you could say that this quantity here, the sum of uh, b, parallel, uh, b parallel times the summation of all those little length segments equals b times the circumference of the circle, two pi r, or r is the radius of the circle or the distance that that uh, edge of that circle is away from our wire here, okay? And that also equals our quantity mu sub zero times i, okay? So you can set those equal to each other, and if you do that, you see that the magnetic field at some distance away from our wire is equal to mu sub zero times i divided by the circumference of the circle here, two pi r, and in this equation, r, is the distance that you are away from the center of this wire here. Okay, now let's talk about the magnetic force between two parallel conductors, or in this case, we have two wires here, and they have some current running through them. This first wire has a current running parallel to the current in my second wire, and the wires are par parallel to each other. So if we use our second right-hand rule, we can figure out where the, like the direction of the magnetic field around these wires. So if I take my thumb and point, my right hand, thumb, point it in the direction of the current here, my fingers point into the ground on this side, so that's gonna be an X here, okay? And then when they curl back around, they're gonna be coming out of the uh, ground toward me on this side, okay? 
So that's the direction of my magnetic field into the ground here, out of the ground here, so it's circling in this direction. And the same case for this one right here. So the magnetic field, finger pointing in this direction, into the board on this side, out of the board on this side. Cool, so look at what happens here. We've got a magnetic field in one direction, um, sorry, into the board on this side, and then a magnetic field out of the board on that side. And when you have those opposite directions of magnetic field there, you're gonna get these wires to attract each other. And so whenever you have current and these wires and those current is in the same direction and parallel to each other, you're actually gonna get your wires to attract. Okay. If one of these wires has a current moving in the opposite direction, then you're going to get your wires to repel. Okay. So we can figure out what is the force on one of these wires due to the presence of the magnetic field coming from the other wire right here. Okay. So we are, we're going to figure that out right here. So we're trying to find the force on wire one this one here, in the presence of the magnetic field created by wire two. Okay, so the force on our wire one here is going to equal the current of wire one here times its length times the magnetic field that it's experiencing. And so that magnetic field is going to be the field coming from the second wire next to it. So that's B2 and then times sine theta. Okay. Um, where a theta is the angle between your, uh, your current and your magnetic field. And these are perpendicular, so sine theta here is going to be sine 90, it's going to be 1. So you can rewrite this as equaling to I times uh, the current in wire 1 times its length times our magnetic field from wire 2. And remember that our magnetic field due to current running through a wire is mu zero i divided by two pi r. So we can replace the magnetic field coming from wire two with mu zero times the current through wire two divided by two pi r. And in this case, r is going to be the distance between our wires here. And so I'm going to replace that r with d. And so when we move down to the next equation, sometimes um, instead of looking for the force on the wire, We'll talk about the force per unit length, just in case these wires are infinitely long, let's say. And so the force per unit length on this top wire here, due to the magnetic field coming from the second wire, is going to be equal to mu zero times I1 times I2 divided by two pi times the distance between them, okay? And so that's the force per unit length on this wire but it's also the same as the force per unit length on this wire, okay? And so the magnitudes of those forces on both of these wires are going to be the same. But the directions will be either pointing in the same direction, either pointing towards each other or pointing away from each other, depending on the direction of the current, and then we have to figure out the direction of the magnetic field from our right-hand rule. And one other important piece of information is that the force between two parallel wires carrying a current is used to define the SI unit of ampere, which we've been using this whole time when we've been talking about current. So to truly define the ampere, if we have two long parallel wires separated one meter apart and they carry the same current, and if the magnetic force per unit length on each wire is 2 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons, then that current is defined to be 1 ampere. And so that's how we arrive at the definition for what 1 ampere is. And in order to do that, we have to think about our parallel wires and currents running through them. In this problem, we're going to calculate the magnetic force of one current carrying wire on another parallel current carrying wire. We have two wires, each having a weight per unit length of one times 10 to the minus four Newton per meter. We've got both of these uh, wires are parallel to each other and one of those wires is directly above the other. We're going to assume that the wires carry current that are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So I1 is equal to I2, 
the magnitude, but our directions are pointing in the opposite direction here. And our wires are spaced 0 0.1 meters apart. So this distance between them is 0 0.1 meters. Okay. And the sum of the gravitational force and magnetic force on the upper wire is zero, which means that my upper wire is levitating. We're going to find the current in the wires based on the fact that my upper wire here is levitating above the bottom wire. So we can only have levitation, <laughs> sounds like magic, but we can only have levitation when the sum of all the forces acting on this top wire here are zero. So if we have the free body diagram, of this wire here, we've got its gravitational force pointing down, its mass times gravity, but we've got the magnetic force that must be acting upward on it in order for the sum of those to be zero. So for levitation, we have the sum of my forces has to equal zero. So that means that Fb minus Fg has to equal zero. Before we go any further, let's think about the direction of the magnetic field created by the current running through these wires here. So if I use my second right hand rule, if my thumb points in the direction of current, then my fingers are gonna curl around in the direction of the magnetic field. So from my perspective, if my thumb is pointing this way, and my fingers are curling around, my fingers are going to come out of the board on top here. So that's the magnetic field coming out of the board here is coming into the board on the bottom side here. Okay, so that's B in on this wire. Then if I think about this wire, I've got my thumb pointing in this direction along the current and then my fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So on top, the magnetic field is into the page so it's also like this. And on the bottom, my fingers are curling around and my magnetic field is pointing out of the page. So we have um, the same sign of the magnetic field direction here um, on in between my wires. So that means that these wires are gonna wanna try to repel each other and that's how we get the levitation, okay? So the magnetic force that this top wire is feeling, it is feeling a magnetic force due to the presence of this wire down here. So the magnetic force acting on this wire here is what we need to find. Now, let's just go ahead and write down our equation for the magnetic force, and that is the current times the length times B times sine of my angle theta. This is my angle between I and B. So I and B are perpendicular in this problem, and so this is gonna be one because sine of 90 degrees is one. So the magnetic force that this top wire is experiencing due to the presence of this bottom wire, that magnetic force is gonna be the current in that wire here times its length times the magnetic force from this bottom wire, okay? Because this top wire has the current running through it, but it's being subject to the magnetic field created by this bottom wire because it has current running through it. So the magnetic force from my top wire is I1 L B2. And then we've got minus Mg equals zero, okay? So um, let's see, what else can we say? So I1L, we can also write an equation or an expression for the magnetic field coming from I2. So the magnetic field, due to the presence of a current through a wire, that equation is mu naught, the permeability of free space, times the current divided by two pi and there's this distance r. So this distance r is the distance away from the wire where you are going to calculate b. So the magnetic field from wire two 
is going to be the permeability of free space times the current running through this bottom wire divided by 2 pi times the distance between these, and I'm going to call that distance d, okay, equals mg. We're looking for the current such that our top wire is levitating. And we said earlier that the magnitude of the current through my wires is going to be the same. That's one of our initial conditions. So I1 is equal to I2. Okay, so if I1 is equal to I2, we've got I times I. So that's really I squared. So I squared times the length times mu zero over two pi d equals mg. So I'm gonna solve this equation for I squared. Okay, so I squared is equal to uh, well, we have to, to get rid of the L mu over 2 pi d, we have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this. And if we multiply by the reciprocal of this on this side, we're going to cancel all of that out. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal over here. So this is equal to mg times 2 pi d over L mu naught. And I'm going to write this as mg over L times 2 pi d over mu naught. Okay, mg, that's the weight of the wire. L, that's per unit length. So this is really our weight per unit length of the wire. And we were told our weight per unit length of the wire earlier. So now to get i, i is going to be the square root of our weight per unit length times 2 pi d over mu naught. Okay, so that equals, I'm just going to swap to a different color now. We've got the square root of, we're going to put a lot of stuff in here. Our weight per unit length was 1 times 10 to the minus 4 newton per meter and we're gonna multiply it by two pi times the distance between our wires, which was 0.1 meter. And then we have to divide it by the permeability of free space. That's two pi times 10 to the minus seven Tesla meter over ampere, okay? So you have to be super careful. We've got a lot of terms here <laughs> that we have to plug into our calculator. And so we plug all that in and we find that the current through each one of these wires, such that the top one is levitating, that current is equal to 0 0.707 amperes. So <laughs> looking at all of this, you again might wonder, how did we get amperes from all of that stuff inside the square root? Okay, well, let's think about that. We've got a newton per meter, that's this quantity here, times, we've got a meter on top, divided by a Tesla meter over ampere. Okay, so that equals Oh, well this meter cancels here and here. So this is Newton times, we are dividing by a fraction, so we multiply by the reciprocal, Newton times ampere over Tesla meter. Now there's another way to write Tesla. One Tesla is equal to a Newton over ampere times meter. So here, I can say that this is equal to Newton times A over the Tesla was a Newton over ampere meter times meter. And so those meters cancel there and there. Okay, and so this is then equal to a Newton times ampere times, <laughs> we divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal times ampere over Newton. So these Newtons cancel and we're left with units of ampere squared inside the square root. So when you take the square root of a unit squared, you get back that unit again. So the square root of something that has a unit of ampere squared will give us just back a unit of ampere.
Okay, so this is how you could determine what current did you need in order for two wires to have one on top such that it's levitating above the other. In this problem, we're going to find the magnitude and direction of a magnetic force acting on a charged particle traveling nearby a current carrying wire. So we have to take a lot of different principles into account and combine them here. We're going to consider a minus 19.4 nanocoulomb charge traveling next to a current carrying wire. What is the magnitude and direction of the force? We're going to get it in nanonewtons. On this charge here, if it is moving at a speed of 4.74 times 10 to the 5 meters per second at a distance of 5.81 millimeters away from a wire carrying 639 milliamperes. So instead of leaving these in millimeters and milliamperes, I just multiplied them already by 10 to the minus 3 here. Okay. So we have to find the magnetic force acting on this negatively charged particle that's moving downward next to this wire, where the current in this wire is moving upward. Okay. So there's a bunch of different things to consider. Where do we start? I am just going to go ahead and write the equation for the magnetic force acting on our charge. Okay, so the magnetic force acting on the charge, you have to read the sentence very closely. We're looking for the magnetic force on the charge, not the magnetic force on the wire. So the magnetic force on our charge, um, we think about just the magnitude of that will equal to the magnitude of QVB sine theta. Okay, this, oh, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put my um, absolute value signs around here, the magnitude. This angle is the angle between V and B. The motion of my particle and the magnetic field that it is subject to. So we have a magnetic field that this particle is subject to. That magnetic field is due to the presence of this wire, okay? So then we also have to think about the magnetic field of this wire, right? The magnetic field of a wire is equal to mu naught, or permeability of free space, times the current running through it, divided by 2 pi d. d is the distance between our particle and the wire, so this is d here. So this magnetic field from the wire is going to go right in here. Okay. Now this angle theta, the angle between the velocity vector of my particle and the magnetic field from the wire, we've got to figure out what the direction is of the magnetic field from the wire before we can understand the sine theta and what it should be. So let's think about our wire. <laughs> For this problem, we're going to use two right-hand rules. Okay. Our second right-hand rule, you put your thumb in the direction of current and your fingers curl around in the direction of the magnetic field. So my thumb is up, my fingers are in the direction of the magnetic field. So here on this side, the magnetic field from my perspective here on all this side is going to be into the page. Okay, the magnetic field is into the page, N2 is an X, and on the other side here, my magnetic field is coming out. So on this side, my magnetic field is out of the page. So my magnetic field around this wire is making a circulatory path here. The magnetic field around my wire is going around this direction. So in this side of my wire, it has to be in, and on this side of my wire, it has to be out if this is the direction of my current. So, over here, we have our particle. Particle's moving down. B is out of the board toward me. So maybe I should um, write this a little bit bigger here. So this angle theta, the angle between V and B, 
Well, they're going to be perpendicular. So if V is down in this direction and B is out of the page pointing toward me, then they're going to be at 90 degrees away from each other. So this angle theta here is uh, 90 degrees, sine of theta is 1. So the magnetic force acting on my charged particle will equal to QVB. B is the magnetic field due to the presence of this wire here. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and think about the direction that this magnetic force is on the charged particle here. To figure out the direction of the magnetic force, we use our first right-hand rule. Okay. Our fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field. Our thumb points in the direction of the velocity vector. So the velocity vector is down. The magnetic field is pointing out toward me. This is a negatively charged particle, so the back of my hand tells me the direction of the force. The back of my hand is pointing in this direction, so my direction of my magnetic force is to the right. So FB is going to be off to the right. So this charged particle is going to want to be attracted to the wire, essentially, because this magnetic force is directing it toward the wire here. Now let's go ahead and get the magnitude of this magnetic force. All right, so this will be Q, V, speed of our particle, B. Let's just go ahead and calculate B. Let's do it over here rather than taking all these terms and just you know plunking it in here. Let's go ahead and find the magnetic field on its own over here separately. So our magnetic field will equal our permittivity of free space, which is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meter over ampere. This is the same thing as a Henry over meter. They're the same thing. Times 639 times 10 to the minus 3 amperes. That's our 639 milliamperes. And then we're going to divide it by 2 pi times the distance that that particle is away from the wire which is um, 5.81 millimeters, or 5.81 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. So my magnetic field here, I take all of these um, um, using them together. And actually, you could simplify it and see that the pi's cancel on top and bottom here. Um, my magnetic field, due to the current through this wire, is 2.20 times 10 to the minus 5 Tesla. So when I'm doing QVB, this is going to be the charge on my particle. We're just taking the magnitude, 19.4 times 10 to the minus 9 Coulomb, times the speed of my particle, 4.74 times 10 to the 5 meters per second, times the magnitude of my magnetic field, 2.2 times 10 to the minus 5 Tesla. Okay. And all of those together will give me a magnitude of the magnetic force acting on that particle of 2.02 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. Now, the problem <coughs> that I said earlier asks us to find um, this force in nanonewtons. So, in one newton, multiply by a conversion factor. In one newton, there's 10 to the 9 nanonewtons. Or you could also multiply this by saying that um, in one nanonewton, or one nanonewton is 10 to the minus 9 newtons. Both of these are the same thing. Newtons are going to cancel here and here. So my answer becomes 202 nanonewtons. That's the magnetic force acting on this charged particle. So in order to solve this problem, we had to think about you know, our equation for the magnetic force. And then we had to input the equation for our magnetic field due to the presence of a current through this wire. Because this particle is moving subject to the magnetic field from this wire. And so this particle will experience a magnetic force because it has some motion through the magnetic field due to this wire here. So we had to combine those ideas, and we had to use our right-hand rule twice, actually right-hand rule two, to get the direction of the magnetic field from the wire, 
and then we had to use our right hand rule one in order to get the direction of the magnetic force acting on my charged particle. So this is a really great example of a problem where we have to combine two ideas, magnetic force, magnetic field, and we had to apply both of our right hand rules.